Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Future Friday, we're going to talk about a very spicy topic, China's electrical plasma jet engine. So let's dive right into it. Now before we understand electrical plasma engine, we have to understand a basic jet engine. So jet engine needs three things to work generally. First is air, obviously. Second is fuel. And third is wind. Now you have to understand jet engines, while they are very powerful, they are not so powerful that they can work without wings. Some military fighter jets are almost that powerful because you can literally have them like this and they can go like that. But generally only rocket engines are that powerful. Jet engines still need wings to provide lift. So that's how you fly. You have air that is providing you oxygen. You have fuel that is the chemical energy source. Then you have wings that provide the necessary lift and you fly. That's the basic of it. Now, how the heck a jet engine works? Now, jet engines have generally three core components. Component number one, compressor. This is the granddaddy of everything. Basically, air, let's say atmospheric air is around 15 PSI. So this puppy will take 15 PSI and compress it to ludicrous PSI. Let's say 200 or 5,000 PSI, whatever have you. Depending on designs, depending on manufacturing, it could be a different, different PSI. So this is a compressor. It compresses air. Then you send it to combustor. Now you have to understand it. The amount of fuel that you want to burn uh, basically limits how much horsepower you can get basically there is a chemical energy there you can't extract uh, let's say you want to extract one megawatt out of energy out of one drop of kerosene it's not gonna happen you have to burn hundreds of liters of it now what will happen if you try to do that without the compressor this is a very interesting aspect if you directly flood that much fuel there without compressed air the fire will simply burn out because there is not enough oxygen to burn this you need what we call psychometric ratio basically you need heat you need enough oxygen and you need enough fuel so the amount of energy we require that requires boatload of fuel to burn that boatload of fuel you need boatload of air compressed air so that's why compressor is very important then you burn that and then it, it creates a lot of chemical energy a lot of thermal kinetic energy utilizing the geometry it blows out now it turns the turbine how basically it's exactly like a hot wind turbine there is like a lot of fire here that's producing a lot of uh, you know motion and that's converting a lot of motion that motion is connected through a shaft and that shaft drives the compressor now we have like okay that creates a feedback loop so basically the more you burn the more exhaust comes out the more the compressor uh, basically uh, turbine spools up the more the compressor provides the air so it's a good feedback loop you may be like okay then how the heck you start this thing yeah that's the biggest problem with uh, jet engines starting them is a hell lot of a headache for example sr71 or blackbird uh, it had no system of starting the engine like once it's in the ground the landed engines are like spooled down you needed a separate system to start that puppy and when you're talking about commercial jets uh, generally they are uh, so problematic it's like they will have a small starter motor that starts a small jet engine that jet engine powers a giant compressor that giant compressor provides air to spool up the big turbines and they will start it one by one so understand that's why like compressor is very important without the compressor all you have is a flamethrower it's almost like how you uh, if you have liquid oxygen and liquid uh, uh, hydrogen you burn them all you get is a flamethrower you don't get a rocket engine you only get a rocket engine if you have a uh, fuel uh, flow pump basically you pro uh, basically provide insane amount of it like higher the pressure the more energy you can get out of it same happens here so burner jet engine rocket engine so you need a lot of compressor air for maximum burn and uh, compressor is not you may think like okay it's just a thing that spins no it takes insane amount of energy atmosphere does not like the idea of just compressing lol i'm gonna get compress it it takes a lot of energy so let's say there is a one megamount of thermal uh, energy that thermal energy ex large amount of it will be uh, basically extracted just to spin up this turbine so that's a very critical balance and in modern system this is a what we call turbo jet engine modern what we have in commercial sector is generally what we call turbo fan engine so there is a giant fan on top which uh, basically there is a tunnel duct quote unquote and that that's it like most of the air is directly bypassing that that's what we call bypass ratio so for best efficiency you want higher bypass ratio so if you have like you know uh, one to one so the bypass ratio like 50 percent goes through the core where this section happens and 50 percent goes from the outside and that's why modern uh, passenger jets are so quiet compared to like if you check a video of like in like 1990s before the this became common the planes were idiotically loud now this is more efficient and because it's coating the supersonic exhaust that is coming out of the jet core is surrounded by uh, slow moving air that slow moving is surrounded by static air it acts as a buffer that's why sounds are much lower so that's how a normal jet engine works you take air you compress the hell out of it you burn a lot of fuel into it and then you extract the energy out of it for propulsion and providing the uh, spinning energy for turbine so basically compressor that's the simple aspect of it 
So what is the idea behind this Chinese uh, microwave blah blah blah? So the reality is very simple. They are using an external compressor. So this is their uh, diagram. They have an independent air compressor which is very big and very powerful. And then they have a magnetron. Basically what you find in your normal microwave. And then they have waveguide. Now this is a bit... Uh, Typical thing, uh, rarely used for common per persons, uh, generally used in communication industry or radar industry. So this will allow you to concentrate microwave on a small point. So utilizing waveguide, they can concentrate microwave on the small spot. Now utilizing lot of compressed air, they can fl flood this area with compressed air. Now they have two sources of energy, lot of compressed air and lot of microwave energy that creates what we call plasma. So that's why it's called plasma system. Now they have a quartz tube and they uh, did the experiment. So they have like, you know, 200 watt the plasma is like only here at 400 it's here at 600 here 800,000 so that's the uh, idea behind it so basically you dump energy into two places pardon me power cut happen you dump energy into two places one is air compressor second is magnetron and then you get the exhaust now what they are doing there is very odd simply because rather than moving the engine like uh, like how you test any other system where you have engine can the engine move itself they are like okay there is a quartz tube and we're gonna put one uh, kilogram of steel ball on top of it and can it move that almost like a pressure cooker so that's the whole point of it so idea is if they can scale this puppy up the plasma should provide the thrust now if you have already spotted a problem awesome for you now the problem is it does not work flat out it does not work it's just a what we call microwave plasma torch we utilize this sort of technology i have provided a video down below where some students are doing this out of an actual normal microwave and they have a waveguide and it's a normal thing it's a people do that sort of thing and some industrial system also utilize that for plasma torch cutters it's a normal thing it does not provide thrust simply because it cannot move itself like even if you buy a basic low-end rc jet engine it has to move itself that's the first requirement let's say it is two kilogram it must provide more than that thrust now what happens is like if it's not that much still it has to provide enough so it can physically move itself you cannot have a jet engine that's like yeah my weight is two kilogram i'm providing thrust in like 100 gram it simply will not move it must uh, overcome its system that's why i specified you also need wing it's not like a rocket engine where you stand it up whoosh, it does not go like that so it cannot move itself. That should be the first red alert is like, this is not a jet engine. Another aspect is many people are saying, okay, it will work if we scale it up. Now scaling it up will make all the problem worst. It will not solve the problem. It will only make it worse. For example, how the heck you are powering the compressor? That's the one thing that I have to understand. It's like, how the heck you gonna drive the compressor? Compressor takes a boatload of energy. And for that reason, compressor is directly powered by turbine that is directly extracting chemical energy. In this, if you are like, okay, I'm gonna do the same system. We have hot plaza that has a lot of energy. Here's the, it's plasma state of matter, AKA idiotically reactive. So even if you use ceramic blades, it's simply gonna erode through it. And given the fact that we use hot plasma for cutting multiple inch thick steel, there is no metal known to man that can survive that for long enough. Again, you can have a system that spools up for a few seconds. Yeah, I can get that like, you know, it will still take some time to erode. So for a few seconds, this will survive, but not for like 12 hour flight cross continental. It will simply melt. So that's the whole point. And plasma is also reactive chemically and not to mention people are saying that it will not have any pollution coming out of it. Well, it will not have any carbon dioxide coming out of it that I can accept, but it will have a lot of reactive things coming out of it. For example, uh, when uh, in old days, hydrogen combustion engine was used, they were still getting NOx emission out of it. We were like, what the heck? Because in the com uh, high temperature, high compression environment of uh, basically piston system, you still have nitrogen, you still have oxygen. They will combine to make NOx. Same will happen here you have such a reactive thing many gases in atmosphere will react with the plasma and you are dumping so much air. you may have a scenario where you have a lot of ozone coming out of it. now you may be like hey ozone good stuff well it's good for the atmosphere bad for us it's a, what we call a bio killer for us so simply because you do not want that we hospitals use ozone to like you know sterilize an area that's how reactive that puppy is ozone at a airport yeah people did so fundamentally it's not a good idea it's flat out does not work that's the whole system it's like it's a jet engine show me it moving itself that's it you do not need it, it does not even need to like you know push uh, like you know have 10,000 tons of horsepower no it's like just move it. just can you move yourself it fails in that and i really like how mit professor said is like they had a pressure cooker and on the top of pressure cooker you have a basically metal um, ct we call it in hindi uh, you just have this scan and it just moves up it's like you know whistle so that whistle they are saying hey the whistle is moving so that, that is a jet engine no 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 so flat out fundamentally broken physics here.
then we come to another aspect assuming you have some better metallurgy or some design which does not require turbines to extract energy or you just have an electrical motor that directly powers it somehow assuming magically you solve all the problems you still have a issue how the heck you gonna pow uh, power it because there is no electrical energy source that exists unless you built an iron man reactor which be mindful iron man reactor can only work if it's a neutronic nuclear fusion and uh, we do not know how to make fusion we can achieve fusion but we do not achieve what we call break even and a neutronic is even harder than this so flat out nothing exists that will even allow you to have an energy source dense enough and be mindful this can be said with experience simply because the us military actually built a nuclear power plane problem with that puppy was that you can make a nuclear reactor you can make a powerful nuclear reactor that's awesome yes there is nothing that can stop the radiation from that because radiation generally uh, the most problematic one is gamma rays gamma rays have a habit of how shall i put this simply go through stuff it does not like to be stopped it simply goes through it so only way to stop it is you have lot of something you can have lot of tungsten lot of lead lot of concrete or lot of uranium you have to have something lot of basically you need both load of atoms in uh, gamma rays weight basically if they did that plane would be so heavy it will not take off no matter what you do it will simply not take off so when us was trying to do this they did what we call shadow uh, shielding basically they had shielding just behind the cockpit area so that area would be safe but everything else would be radioactive now you may be like ak that does not uh, you know seem stable that's why usa canceled this project and when russia even achieved higher performance there first they were like how the heck russia developed this yeah they were cooking their own uh, pilots basically so that's the whole thing nuclear is flat out not safe because to make it safe you have to have lot of shielding lot of shielding equals it's not going to get off the ground so and not to mention even if somehow magically you took it off the ground what will happen in an accident and batteries lol and another aspect is battery is the power source here everybody is like you know in future we will have battery which i doubt it but assume assume let's say in future we have beta voltage energy system where you have that kind of energy density awesome why the heck you will go through this system why the heck you will not simply use propeller because propeller runs on direct motor motor directly runs on electricity you do not have to convert energy from one format to another converting energy from format to format reduces its efficiency and this microwave system has heat as its primary output you don't want heat you want propulsion propeller is far better for that or even if you want jet system be mindful you can still have that uh, normal jet engine replace the jet engine core with a normal motor that can provide like i think what uh, 100 horsepower or 10 th uh, horsepower i'm saying megawatts of power and that's it done like it will simply work you can still provide uh, almost like 700 km per hour with normal motor system of course it may have to be made of uh, superconductor so it's more efficient but you get the point that's what everybody is doing you cannot utilize this because this will have so much waste heat coming out of it what's the point why the heck you will not use a normal system so that's the whole problem it's like it's flawed on two layers and nobody was talking about it now all those these things makes me incredibly sad simply because this sort of poor reporting and i'm talking from proper journalists who's getting paid to do this i'm talking people like who have on paper i am not sure whether they are like lying about it i hope they are lying about it because if they are actual engineers who could not like detect a basic thing it's like wait a minute it's an engine which is not able to move itself you are moving something else utilizing it yeah that should have been like you know red alert this is not a system that is ready so fundamentally it erodes uh, people's trust on science because if you have 10000 fake products people will be like yeah scientists uh, they keep making claims none of that works and the other aspect is incomplete technology is just that incomplete they might be like okay what if in the future what ifs have no answer in real life it takes decades to make something perfect then it takes another few decades to make it into market then it takes another one decade to make sure that it's actually financially profitable because think of it this way uh, somebody in the lab came up with the idea of concord somebody took years as in like britain and france both of them worked years to make it physical reality then they have to spend years as in like almost decade at this point in time to make it into mass production then it flopped so be mindful incomplete technology is not the way of future it's like so many videos and and that's why i don't use animations in like people are like showing normal jet engine is like uh your know, nasa uses ion engine systems and plasma system like no it does not like it's 100 percent useless anywhere other than deep space like the best the most high powerful ion engines i can do like this on it nothing will happen to me it's like i, I can have engines going you know tony stark on my outside of it i'm like i will be bored that's how weak the thrust is and if you i try to do that with a jet engine even a remote control jet engine yeah so fundamentally this sort of incomplete things and poor reporting is really bad for the people and another aspect that creates a false sense of uh, timing where it's like oh why the heck this does not happen it takes years decades from lab to become real 
so fundamentally this creates a very warped perspective everybody is like you know susceptible to what we call scams on top of that one thing you can do even even if you do not have like you know phd on top of phd look for the details devil is always in the detail for example in that system the biggest thing that you can notice is like hey wait a minute how much energy you are providing for the like they have the watt output but that's for magnetron how much energy is your compressor consuming or like they are saying like it can lift one kilogram object assume 100 percent assume it has thrust of like you know five or six kilogram what is the total weight of the system so that's the whole thing devil is always in the detail the moment something is just a cg just a render just a talk run away if you can't find a exact video and this video is like not even uploaded in youtube i have brought find a v vimeo outcome to show you the video please check it out there so this creates a what we call very fertile ground for scams where everybody is acting like this dumb dumb people will have like you know water shear does not work solar roadway does not work juno does not work blood <laughs> other things basically it's very painful it's like this is horrifying because that's the whole point of uh, journalism where they're like whoa whoa you are making a very bold claim is it true like you don't need to have phd you just need to show me that's it that's all you have to do is show me not like oh you know this university taught like i really like the idea of um, mit professor is like he was very angry apparently it's like what the hell this is not a jet engine it's like you can't call your pressure cooker a freaking jet engine you can't call a you know candle a jet engine because compressor takes a lot of energy and if you are driving a compressor using electrical power run on that directly why why do you want to go through extra steps so fundamentally it does make me sad that this sort of system where again maybe in the future they have a design that does not require turbines maybe in the future maybe maybe but there's like 50000 maybe there's like maybe so that's what, like maybe in the future then i will see it but like right now talking about is like as ready no flat out no it will take bare minimum 50 60 years bare minimum and then also there is a very good chance that people will be like why the heck go through extra steps just to use a normal motor that's the same thing. That's why a hydrogen car never took off. It has been made from as early as 2008. So this was my presentation on Chinese uh, electric plasma jet engine. Hopefully you have liked it. Learn from it. In that case, please click the like button. Share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike. Press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe. Press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.